Thank you, Your Excellencies. Please, if I may ask you to indicate by a show of hands, uh, as you need the pledge forms, our ushers will be there to assist. And we also encourage members to pledge. And no amount of giving is in insignificant to the Lord. If you give by faith, you really will reap the rewards. Uh, I'm living testimony that indeed making Jesus your partner in your business and your life uh, is something that is worth your while. So as you're ready to, to pledge, please indicate and we'll make sure to attend to you. When it comes to uh, dinner, dinner will be ready in about 15 minutes or so. And as the convener mentioned, it is a free dinner. It's not uh, on condition that you pledge or not. So feel, feel welcome. I'd like to call on Honorable Metzing, who is the Deputy Prime Minister from the Kingdom of Lesotho, who's our keynote address. And this year's Cong Congress, of course, was focusing on strengthening ties and relationships, pr primarily when it comes to a trade within Africa, speaking with one voice and transcending barriers of uh, trade and, and barriers of movement. With that, please put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen, as we welcome His Excellency, Honorable Medzing. Director, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Also, allow me to pay my respect to the Chairman of the Global Fund for Jesus and Convener of the Global Business Roundtable, Minister Melindi Wezulu, Minister of Small Business Development, and Minister of trade, commerce, and industry in the Kingdom of Swaziland, Ndate Hedioni, Dr. Nevas Mumba, former pro, uh, President of the Republic of Zambia, Justice Lebozang, the CLO Acting Justice of the Constitutional Court, Mayor Machavane, who is the special guest together with the members of the family. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me really to say all protocol observed. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, let me also thank uh, the convener and the leadership of the Global Business Roundtable for having given me this opportunity to say a few words tonight. Uh, there is a saying or a scripture from the Bible which says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is for the first time that I'm introduced into this family. And when going through the literature and the program of this August Congress, I came across an awe-inspiring message and the theme which reads, we are praying for the emergence of frontiers for the purpose of transforming Africa's resources for development and export. In his 1998 book, Corporation Nation, Charles Deba, an American, a sociology professor, a popular author of books like People Before Profit and the Pursuit of attention has this to say. Today, as in the Gilded Age, 
we live in a world where a morality of personal responsibility rubs shoulders with a culture of greed and of fragrant social irresponsibility. Now as then, business has shared its collective responsibility for its employees, just as government has for its citizens. This famous book poses that human beings, individually or collectively, in the name of business estates, empires, and corporations, have lost humanity. Humanness that separates the humans from that of other creatures, which we proudly call Boto or Ubuntu in our region. The conditions obtaining on the ground should exhort the intercessors, the children of God, to say yes, we need to grow as people. We need to acquire wealth, material or spiritual as the scriptures teaches us of abundant life, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. But our role as moral beings, as gracious, benevolent, and merciful creatures of God, must never be forgotten or undermined or underplayed. In our pursuit of these promises, the needy and the environment must not be wretched because of our greed and avarice. Professor Charles Deba, a erudition that I have cited, portrays that conditions in a spectre is a specter against which the children of God must extricate themselves from. For our faithful God has bequeathed and bestowed upon us unparalleled blessings as he declared or he declares in Isaiah chapter 15 verse 12 to 13 that you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. This scripture bears witness to our inheritance, deserved future, destiny for us and for posterity. As the elected officials of the people, we traverse the length and breadth of the globe in pursuit of our core mandate and responsibility to our people of dignified and improved livelihoods and living conditions. There is a notion that our comp compatriots wonder if we have lost the plot or even to some extent question our sanity because they see us always traveling far and wide in search of opportunities and networks. Those who know the history of Southern Africa know the chronicles of the great Soto prophet and a doctor named Mushomi the legendary mentor of King Mushosho I, who also wandered over the whole region healing people and collecting herbs, as well as learning the ways in which other nations lived and warded off challenges. God has created the world and his people in different places, where different resources flourish so that we can exchange resources. Like the great Mushomi, we are clear in our resolve that no man 
is an island. As the Elizabethan scholar and poet John Donne puts it, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a cloud be washed away by the sea, Europe is less. As well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. He tolls for thee. Ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, in multilateral or bilateral relations of nations, there are nations who do not see others as worthy of human treatment, which I believe that gap, the GBR will close it. We have nations at times who are very selfish uh, in their selfish uh, pursuit of their interest. They, term, they at times engage in very hard bargains. And we have to pray that the world rid itself of these iniquities making ends meet on the one side and keeping the integrity, sovereignty, and sense of self-confidence and self-respect of the people on the other has never been such an intricate exercise like it has become lately. Someone, somehow, one has to sell one's soul for his people to live a decent life. I'm saying this from experience. Using the wealthy spectacles to view life, I would concur with Thomas Huxley when he says, the known is finite, the unknown is infinite. Intellectually, we stand on an islet in the midst of an illimitable ocean of inexplicability. While the Bible in Proverbs 9, 10 advises us, fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Allow me, Master of Ceremony, to sound a clarion call to all of us from governments, to corporate, micro, small and medium enterprises, that we must all exercise due patience and tolerance with one another so as to create necessary conditions and environment for our shared progress and that every one of us must carry out his duty moral or material, and to each according to their responsibility in order to attain this shared prosperity. The obduracy and imperviousness of both the public and private sector is a recipe for abject poverty, negative growth, and calamity. Both these sectors must create channels and mechanisms that are true to purpose and devoid of bias. This will surely become a precondition to a means to an end of undignified standard of living of our populations. In conclusion, Bommel Bondate, uh, I recently came across a story from one book. It was a story of uh, people who were climbing the tallest mountain in the world. 
and when they were climbing the mountain, they met some harsh conditions, weather conditions, and some felt like retreating. And they eventually decided to retreat. But one individual uh, declared that my intention is to reach the mountain top. And he said to his fellow climbers, if it happens that I don't reach the mountain top and God remembers me and calls me and I die, on my grave, you don't say rest in peace, but you must say he died while climbing the mountain. To the founders of this big organization, I would say to you, like that guy who has climbed in the mountain, you must make it your motto that no matter how difficult the journey will be, you must persevere. And in the end, when you are no more on your graves, the generation to come may not say rest in peace, but they may say they died while trying to make a difference in the lives of the poor, in the lives of the less fortunate. May God bless you. I thank you very much. Thank you so much, Your, His Excellency Honorable Metzing. Indeed, for those words of encouragement, every nation has got its strength Every nation has got its gifts and talents from the Lord. I have just made the conclusion that the people of Lesotho are gifted with being great orators. They tell beautiful stories, as our chief ambassador, Advocate Busiu, always does. So, Your Excellency Mizing, you haven't betrayed that quality of Basotho of being able to leave us with a compelling story that we can take with us. You can just imagine yourself on that mountain saying GPR and Global Business Roundtable and GFFJ, I cannot give up until we've made an impact to the indigent and the destitute of this world. Please give him a round of applause. We appreciate it. I'd like to acknowledge um, in our miss Her Royal Majesty, the Queen Mother of the Royal Bafu King, if we can give her a round of applause. And if we've omitted to acknowledge any other distinguished delegates, it's just the nature of Global Business Roundtable and GFFJ that we will have uh, great heroes, stalwarts, and uh, excellent uh, members within our midst that sometimes we may not be able to always acknowledge. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for dinner, and as we serve at dinner, we'll be accompanied in song, of course, and beautiful classical music and renditions by the maestro himself, Richard Koch, and the Johannesburg Festival Orchestra. Please give them a hand. <laughs> 